Um, hello, welcome to the presentation of Green Leasing Contract. My name is Benny Magnusson, work at Big Yellow Dalarna, a sustainable cluster for building industries. Um, I, I just want to present this is one of the nine tools that we have made in the Effect for Building project. Uh, green lease contract is to highlight the building environment impact. The future doesn't look so good if we continue using the energy we use today. We do need to make changes to achieve the energy and climate goals. Um, building industry is a big part of the problem because they are 40% of the emitted CO2. So, and it, it started to get more demands from the politicians and the municipality office to make it more green. And that costs a lot of money, but um, um, some, some people don't have the money to do it. And that's green lease contract can help to get started without doing so many investments. Uh, the dem demands on the energy efficiency often lands on the municipalities, the building manager and the tenants. And uh, that's why we need to find a way to work together to reach the goal and put the our buildings in the center and make it more green. Mm. The green lead method is a living process that is going to change over time. So you have to always keep on working on it together. Uh, the foundation is a green lease contract where the participant work is based on the contract as a platform and tool. Uh, it helps the landlord and tenants to create a dialogue about the environmental impact that can be reduced. The main purpose of the contract is to focus on the property environmental impact, which include the businesses that are active on the property. Um, energy savings is of, of course one of the big goals in this, but you can have even include other, other environmental friendly uh, things like uh, recycling and reuse share equipments things like that and by lowering energy of course you increase the money that's being saved and can be used to other incentives to um, save even more energy like uh, energy, better energy performance on the buildings, better maintenance. Um, and this is a circle. And then you, each year, you sign the, uh, look at the contract and you reevaluate it and start over. So it's very important, this part that, that is always uh, circulating. So it's not getting just a piece of paper that you forget about go on with your life. Uh, the important to have when you gonna make a green leasing contract is to, to have a aim to be able to reach the goal. The, the goal should be easy understanding and both parties must agree on it. Motivation is a key to success because this is a method with demands some effort from both parties. Uh, we have seen that if you don't have the motivation from one party, there, there's, there's not fair workload and then the other party gets tired of uh, being in this contract. Uh, it's good to have some incentives that can be used as a motivator for, for example, financial. Um, this will have, it, it's good that both parties have incentives so they have something to work for. 
this can be financial or it can be for uh, the environmental goals or something in the municipality. Uh, meeting is very important to keep communication alive and share knowledge about the building. This can contribute to even more savings and energy resources because in the meetings you can uh, the landlord learns more about the activities on his property and what they can adjust and change um, and uh, the tenants can change their behavior on together with the landlords to save energy. Uh, the, the last step is the follow-up. It's probably one of the most part of this is to see and reflect on what have been done and what what have needs to be done and what can we do more the next year and see how we can improve the contract. Uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit of the green lease advantages of saving energy. Uh, of course, there is the obvious reason is to save the energy and uh, uh, minimize the effect uh, on the grid and uh, save money and secure your and energy in the future when it's if it started to get a little bit more expensive um, uh, you get a better knowledge of the building and how it operates and uh, you can easier make changes over time to make it fit the activities there are in the building Uh, of course, the environmental issue is very good on several parts. Of course, it are good for environment to lower energy, but all the people that are involved in this seems to get more energy, <clears throat> more environmental friendly, and uh, spread this to other people and it gets like uh, wave things. People start to take after this and um, be better in the private life too, not only in the building. Um, the financial is um, here because uh, if you save money, it's good that both parties can split this money and use it to even make more energy efficient measures or something else to keep uh, the work with the environmental more interesting. Communication, build a stronger relationship between the landlord and the tenant with the building and business in center. Uh, this is very helpful because if you have a problem with your building, you can contact your landlord much easier and, and the landlord can contact the tenants and they already know each other, they already have uh, a, uh, a partnership. Uh, it's easy to uh, the dialogue and put the uh, building in the center to optimize their um, the maintenance of the building so so if something breaks or something you can easily report in and get to fix so don't have to uh, spend a lot of money in lost energy or something like that this leads to a better collaboration it's more important than the saved energy because in the long run with the collaboration you will save energy if you uh, anyway, because if you do these things I have said here, but with the communication, put the building in the center, the, that's going to save energy uh, and uh, resources for sure. Um, the green leasing contract can be used in all kind of 
buildings and business and situations. Uh, it's only the imagination that sets the boundaries and the willing to work with environmental issue. Uh, a school is very good because here you can combine the contract with the education and you get more out of it because you involve schools with kids that are our next generation and can spread this like in homeworks and to other uh, to the parents and uh, things like that so it's very good um, offices can be positive if they want to have a greener image uh, and sometimes uh, we see a, a a trend that tenants demands it they want to have a company they want to rent in a green building so they have this image um, that you're doing something good in the business uh, residential building can have it for changing the behavior in use of energy here can recycling be important too and included um, in health centers, um, use a lot of energy, so it's uh, profitable to help each other to make the building more a business more adapted to each other and look into it because it's a very big win to make it more energy efficient. And then uh, last one, part I can talk about is swimming halls. They use a very big amount of energy. And this is very important for the landlord and tenant to talk about the energy use and how it's used, like ventilation, heating water, uh, uh, um, and yeah, use the heat from the water, the tap water. So, it's uh, you can save a lot of money on that. So I think I'm going to stop my presentation right there, and I'm going to leave over to one of our project partners, Janis from Vitsimes, who have done some fantastic job with uh, competition schools, and he's going to do a presentation about that. Yeah, good afternoon. Can you hear me, Benny? Yes, I hear you. Uh, yeah, I will uh, try to briefly explain about uh, green lease results uh, in uh, in Latvia and with the planning region. So basically, uh, we see that there's the problem uh, when uh, we talk about uh, public buildings, and uh, in this case also specifically schools, uh, that uh, the schools, the the tenants uh, as, as uh, a school uh, with director and uh, technical uh, engineer and uh, and children, they really don't understand and then don't think about energy consumption as itself because the municipality is paying the bills, municipality is reading the, the heat meter, the electricity meter and school assumes energy as a uh, as something self-understandable they don't think is it a much is it less uh, are they energy efficient or not they don't think about it because it's always there uh, and then our idea was to test uh, this green lease contract uh, uh, specifically this sector in, in schools in, uh, in school as a tenant and municipality as uh, as as owner of the building uh, benny can you please uh, switch off your microphone maybe for for a while oh sorry yeah and uh and then uh, well we arranged uh, a small competition uh, between uh, 23 uh, school buildings uh, where they uh, save energy uh, competing with themselves and also with with uh, other schools and uh, we had uh, the rules uh, that certain schools could apply and uh, then 23 schools applied for our program uh, the program was uh, uh, peri program pre period was one year, and altogether we covered about uh, 4,000 uh, pupil with uh, 54,000 square meters of area. And altogether in 2018, 
uh, in the baseline was 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 developed for year 2018 and 17 and the average uh, cost for energy for these buildings were about 300,000 euros per year for uh, only for energy energy costs and uh, then uh, our idea was that okay uh, let's uh, let's uh, sign this green lease contract but it was very simple the main idea was that uh, municipality as building owner um, assures that 66.7% uh, uh, of the saving of energy cost savings will uh, will be kept by school that uh, school can uh, spend this money and uh, municipalities will uh, will have only 33% of the savings therefore uh, this uh, was a huge uh, a difference uh, when we talk about uh, conventional conventional i don't know agreements because uh, now school uh, tenants school users are really interested in saving the energy because they see that if they save they will have some additional uh, money in the budget uh, which they, they can spend on uh, other energy efficiency measures or like bonuses for themselves and uh, and yes, so we started the program, we developed uh, the baseline, we, we calculated what is the historical energy consumption, and then and then we uh, each month we organized uh, and developed uh, materials for, for the children that uh, there's some specific material which they can use and work in their uh, classes uh, and also get their education, like, like Benny told. And uh, there were also some uh, practical and efficiency measures in each of the month. For example, if the month topic is heating, then there were also practical uh, examples how to save heating in that month. Of course, they use this also in other months, but for that month, they get the information about heating. They have the tasks there, which they can use in, uh, in different um, uh, subjects. Uh, they have homework uh, also for heating, which they needed to send to the planning region for yeah, uh, like uh, after next month, and then we and planning region also tried uh, to motivate them by organizing uh, joint events and uh, gather the information, uh, and so on. <clears throat> and uh, and the main uh, uh, main tasks, uh, uh, main uh, like idea, uh, how to motivate them to save was also the teaching materials, which uh, which looked like this. Uh, each month, like I told before, we, we developed develop these, and afterwards, after after the project completely, the, we uh, developed uh, these materials like in one book, one digital book. Uh, I think it was 166 pages. It consists of two parts. One is for pupil, another one is for teachers. So basically, two two books uh, like uh, for uh, for people to, to learn which uh, still is used in other schools and hopefully will be used in the next next years also so and the school uh, main task was uh, to read their own data to start to understand where the heat is coming from <laughs> where and uh, to involve also people in energy saving activities uh, the 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 objective for schools was to engage in our events what we organized and to reduce energy consumption in their building without like any reduction in comfort level and also without any huge investment uh, and during this one year uh, we uh, represented them the savings each month and uh, during the year they needed to complete the homeworks uh, and uh, each homework consisted a small part from the action plan so basically during this whole one year they developed the action action plan which they can use uh, uh, second and third year what they will, will do there and, uh, and there are some examples from uh, from these monthly homeworks uh, one of the homeworks was for example to uh, to introduce people with the heat substation or, or the heat source and this was the first time when people can see that the heat is not generated in radiators but it really comes from from heat substation or from the boiler and uh, they needed to to see what, what what's there and, and so on so then, then there was uh, some schools organized a hot uh, sweater day that everybody came into the uh, sw uh, sweaters to the school. Therefore, they were able to decrease the indoor temperature for a few degrees. And the conclusions were very interesting that some of the 
children told that actually it's still hot that they can decrease even more because the existing temperature in the schools are quite high. Uh, and yeah, and the results uh, were quite good. Uh, we saw that uh, the schools which were very active and uh, which wanted to participate in such a program and uh, where municipalities helped them a little bit, uh, like Benny told that this cooperation is very, very important. These schools achieved very good results. Uh, and of course, there were some schools which didn't do anything and uh, which uh, consumption increased. Uh, but uh, I have to say uh, that even these schools already at the beginning told that ah, we have some different problems, therefore we will not be able to, to do this and that. So basically that they even didn't try that they, they have some myths or they know that, okay, they cannot do anything, therefore they didn't try. But other schools uh, tried and uh, some of the schools uh, achieved huge uh, saving results. And altogether, we had two groups. One group was competing in saving heat and electricity with uh, heat meters they had there. In average, taking into account also the increase in some buildings, uh, they saved 4.3 percent uh, and uh, it was 10,000 euros per year so and in the second group uh, which saved only electricity because they didn't have heat meter uh, they had uh, uh, a little bit higher savings it was five percent but still there was school which consumption increased more than 10 percent therefore the total result could be better without without this school and uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's the thing. What we wanted to test, we we see that this works now. The schools are saving uh, energy and working with this green lease construct even uh, even further, uh, but without vision planning region involvement. So municipality collects the data, analyzes it, and determines the results. And schools still uh, works by their developed action plans, analyze the data, use the, some use our materials, and uh, take uh, implement the energy efficiency measures. We developed an online-based Excel spreadsheet where they can input the data and both parties see what are the actual savings uh, and it's uh, more easy and understandable for them with the climate corrections and, and everything. They don't need to uh, know everything, how it's uh, corrected. They just need to uh, input uh, outdoor temperature, degree day, uh, heating days and, uh, and also the energy consumption. And uh, this is what we see that uh, how actually every municipality could work with every uh, municipal uh, building. That this is a good way how to work. Uh, that the tenants, uh, the workers really see the, uh, the benefits, and then they are motivated, and then they are willing to to uh, save the energy and think about it. And uh, like many told, it really increases the total cooperation between the workers people are more happier they have like small hobby in their their office place and uh, they form a groups uh, with active uh, people who are uh, environmentally minded and uh, they involve other people and it, uh, it grows bigger and bigger and therefore the savings are also higher every year so yeah that's uh, from my point uh, that they, that's uh, that's all uh, thank you uh, if you have any questions please don't hes hesitate to ask I think we have a question. Uh, yeah. Um, great project uh, about the school which did not save the. Uh, they ask about. The school that didn't save the electricity and what happened? Two year baseline, uh, then it appeared that uh, maybe they, I don't know, used the lighting a little bit more, maybe they uh, used a little bit more. Uh, uh, like a little bit more kitchen stoves they used or something like this there were no specific uh, measure, uh, sectors why, why it increased but uh, all, all together of course each school uh, tried to uh, like complain that oh we have kitchen stoves and we don't uh, we don't have a possibility to impact them and so on but this is one of the 
uh, things which you can include in this green lease contracts uh, that uh, you try to educate also the kitchen staff if they are outsourced and and this is all manageable that the, the most important part i think is the motivation like many told and, and also the the willingness to do this because if you want uh, you, you can achieve everything yeah okay thank you yeah, so thank you it was a very good presentation i think it's uh, it's important to see that they learn something about it even if it, they don't succeed with the goal but they learn a lot of things about it and have something to work on later on so i think it's very important yeah that that's, that was one of the things uh, what uh, we had the meetings with teachers uh, who are responsible for uh, saving energy in their schools in this program and we saw that uh, they they were more interested in uh, in new materials about energy efficiency uh, heating electricity saving and so on than actually for these financial gains that uh, this was the main reason what they told to us that they are very happy that there are new materials because usually it's like not old books but they are quite uh, like i don't know five ten year old books uh, and usually the subjects are as as uh, as they are like mathematics like nature science and so on and so on but there is no one subject about uh, environment or, or something like this and this uh, materials uh, covered everything starting from natural science like physics mathematics and everything and we tried to develop the materials that they are available for i don't know second grade and even uh, 12th grade for example that they can be used and uh, there was a one question are the yes. schools municipality encouraging other schools municipalities now actually yes we have seen that uh, three of the municipalities uh, started this as uh, as normal practice in their uh, municipality that they work with all the schools like this now i uh, don't know the specific results yet because the year is still not over and then we will try to to get these results but three municipalities from from eight municipalities before they uh, added new schools in their program and uh, they are saying okay if you save you get uh, s some part of the money here the materials and and so on but basically they have the possibility to do this so uh, answering to your question yes yes there there are municipalities encouraging other schools so, well yeah. thank you so much yeah thanks Presentation. I I'm gonna leave the floor to one of uh, uh, our cases that have been working in schools with this. Uh, uh, it's uh, municipality of Avesta, Gamla Byn, uh, Jakob Lindqvist. He's gonna speak about their experience of the green lease contract. Mm -hmm. What? Oh, okay. sorry. You get this picture. Yeah, I can't see any picture right now, but it's loading for me. I don't know. Oh, okay. I see it, but I can start. Yes. Uh, hello, my name is Jakob Linkvist, and I work as an energy controller for Gamla Byn, a real estate company in Avesta. Sweden, owned by the municipality. We did start a green lease contract or energy contract, as we call it, with a school in central Avesta called Bersna Skolan in 2019. The energy savings would come from changing the behavior of staff and students of school, operating times, and smaller energy saving projects. To encourage the school in saving energy, we decided to split the energy savings and give it back to the school as a reward. In 2019, we did manage to save approximately 20,000 kilowatt hours, and the school got 170 new school books as a reward from us. Uh, we did. We decided to continue the energy contract with Bersna Skolan for 2020, and we see that energy contract could be used more by us in other school, kindergartens, and nursing homes. Uh, that was everything for me. 
Thank you for a short and interesting presentation about. Uh, I don't know if you see the pictures of the the school in the background and their measurements during the year. Uh, now was uh, it would minimize to see uh, my uh, uh, my writing for this. But uh, yes, this is the the graph. Yes, you can see the you savings. Is there anyone have a question for Jakob and his project? Um, maybe we can take it later if it can, comes in. Uh, I want to thank you for participating. Uh, so, so, sorry, can I have a question? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, maybe what are uh, the biggest like energy efficiency measures? What what was done and. Uh, uh, like many told that every year this action plan is revised. Uh, maybe what they are planning to do next year and uh, and uh, afterwards. Our plan with this school was uh, to do easy solutions. So uh, change the behavior of the staff and students to save energy by turning lights off, don't open windows, uh, etc. So we didn't do an, any big uh, energy projects here. We did some small, uh, we did, did buy some t uh, energy timers for the school so they can uh, use for lighting. And uh, then we did change the operating times on, of the ventilation. Uh, the interesting thing with this project is because there's no money, you haven't invested any money in this project. Very little money. We, we invested some, but not much. No. Uh, and uh, when they control the ventilation, they uh, adjust it. They talk to the school and how to minimize the ventilation's activity or something like that. And the lighting when it's on and off and things like that. So. Uh, you can come, you can do something without starting investing a lot of money right away. Yes. I think yeah, this yeah, is yeah, a for, good example. For us, it was similar that most of the schools uh, didn't uh, do any investment that it was uh, exactly the same. But uh, they see that uh, by changing behavior, they can save these like five to ten, maybe more percent. And it... Uh, gives this saved money which afterwards they can invest and start to invest in small energy efficiency measures and this is actually the case where you can can see how this financial instrument is really working that uh, during some time period afterwards you can allow yourself to do even bigger uh, energy efficiency measures uh, and it, it, it everything started with small behavior change uh, uh, things and uh, it's uh, really useful how you can transform your future money payments into today's in investment. Yes, exactly. Well, thank you, Jakob. Thank and you. I'm gonna uh, have a Olle. Is your? I'm gonna leave the floor Olle Viking from uh, the municipality of Wandsbro. He's gonna talk about their case. In Let's see if I can find the presentation. Yes. Uh, there. Oh. There you go. The floor is yours. Yeah. Hello, my name is uh, Ude Viking, and I work as a real estate manager and landlord in Bonsbro. Uh, our project in Effect for Buildings is uh, green lease contracting, as your others. Uh, were a project were in the school, Smedberg School, uh, and once pro municipality is a small one, it's about 7,000 inhabitants, and it's in Dalarna, Sweden. Next. Uh, there you can see the school. Uh, there is about 300 students in the school, and it's about uh, 3,500 square meters. And that's uh, applic applic application plan. 
So we had on this building. Uh, contract meeting, he will meet the headmaster and staff from the landlord. Uh, we are signing the contract and review the action plan. Uh, the goals for the project is to activate the climate goals for 2030 and perform Environment Day in, uh, in the school in 2020. Of course, we have the Agenda 2030 goals with us. Uh, when we started it up, we have a seminar with all the uh, school teachers about environment and uh, sustainability, uh, and also about the green green, con green lease contract, of course. Uh, fan and engine room. Uh, we starting taking command of the fan and the engine room. Uh, we prepared an, an operation plan. They will notice that we need to do for saving energy and provide a good environment for the tenants. Uh, for example, we adjust the heating temperatures and ventilation times, of course. Uh, we organized us for taking care of the system for energy in the building. Uh, monitor, monitoring of consumption energy is very important for see that we are what we are consumption. Uh, savings during the period. Uh, you can see the statistic. There can have the our uh, there you can see the statistic statistic that we are monitoring of energy. Uh, during the green lease period, uh, so far we have saved about 17,100 kilowatt hours. Uh, we started with this before this project, so we have saved uh, a lot more before. Also. Uh, project organization. Uh, it's very important uh, to have a good staff and a, a dialogue and also clarifying their responsibility areas and what they are, have to do. That's very important. Also, monitoring, collection and use the system for statistic. Uh, monthly follow-up is implemented and in our organization now. Uh, so what have we done? We changed to a light system based on motion detection in 15 classroom. Uh, we have optimization, opti operation optimization of the heating and the ventilation sy systems. And uh, we are monitoring and customized the operation plan. Uh, also we increase the custom based dialogue. Conclusions, uh, organization, uh, edu edu educate the school staff uh, and also the staff in the office and the operation staff about energy saving, uh, follow up what you are doing, uh, communication with users, teachers and students are important to have the increase and uh, creating in incentives for users. For example, buy playground equipment for a school for some percent of a saving as a bonus. Uh, the process is started, you can see. Yes, that was our part of the project. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ulle. Mm.
it's interesting to see this is two different type of schools and and uh, the structure is different between the two municipalities so it's uh, different experience from each group uh, do you have any question for Olle or uh, Olle, what is your next step for the green leaf? Uh, uh, we have, have a, a better dialogue with the, with the tenants. Uh, we have some problems now with the corona, so we haven't could manage what we want, but uh, we are working uh, forward for this. And we are also going to have a green lease contracting in our own buildings for our customers and tenants like, on, under the next year. Oh. Well, thank you very much for presentation today. Uh, I see we are <coughs> our time schedule fits pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna end this with uh, with something. If you want to read more about green leasing contracts and what we have done in this project, you can go to effectfulbuilding.se and uh, click here you have all the tools place and you can go to green leasing contract we have been written a guideline for green leasing contract that step by step uh, tells you information about how you can implement the green lease contract and what part of the contract uh, what, what should be included in a green lease contract we even have some templates and examples they have their example from Vonsto uh, uh, and uh, uh, Gamlavin here, so you can see what they have written in theirs. Um, and we have some training materials and PowerPoints so you can look into and uh, learn more about the green leasing contract. So I want to thank you all for listening. On this, and I hope uh, you try out Green Lease the Contract because I think it's a very good start if you want to start working with energy savings because you get the more notion about your buildings and your measuring systems and things like that, and that makes it easier to do other uh, energy measures that are more costly, but and you're afraid to do them right now, then this can be a way to get more certain on which measures you should be do, doing and that fits the purpose of the building. So if there are any more questions, otherwise I say thank you and uh, hope you listen to the rest of the seminar today. Goodbye.